Welcome to the C.S. Joseph Podcast. Tonight's episode, we're going to be discussing one of the better Acolyte questions that I've been asked. Acolyte members are able to ask me a question once a month, and I make videos or in podcast episodes out of their questions so that all of us within the Ego Hacker community can, um, can definitely uh, <laughs> benefit um, from uh, the lessons being taught. And uh, speaking of the Ego Hacker community, we're going to be releasing something called Ego Nation in uh, the very uh, near future. You're going to want to check that out when it is released. <laughs> Recently, I had a uh, meeting with the leadership, the mod team, and the community leaders of uh, the Discord server, and uh, which which is great. So. More on that later. Check it out when it comes. Uh, hopefully it'll be out sooner than later, but uh, it'll fundamentally transform how we do things within the Ego Hacker community, ultimately for the benefit of the community, which would be awesome. I'm very, uh, very happy about that opportunity. bunch of uh, <laughs> nice uh, street racer gang uh, just moved by. That's pretty cool. You never know what's uh, down here in uh, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. It's a good time. Well, up here, I guess, technically. It's up, not down. Down is further south. Up is further north. So we're kind of like on the north side of the country, hence why uh, I say up. In case you all wanted to know. Not that you care, but whatever. So anyway, tonight's question. How can I cope with having extroverted feeling inferior? Which is an amazing question. This, I'm so glad. This applies to INTPs and ISTPs. So let's talk about their cognitive origin. Remember folks, cognitive origin is the thing that people are seeking the most out of life. It's like they have a huge hole in their soul and they're trying to fill it with something. And people are always trying to fill it with the same thing in their life over and over and over. And that is their cognitive origin. It doesn't matter what their octogram is. It doesn't know how they're cognitively developed. It doesn't matter how their cognitive focus. Their origin never changes. And they're always attempting to fill their life up with what that origin is. So everyone's seeking something out of life. And cognitive origin is what people are seeking. But what are ISTPs seeking? Well, they're seeking validation. Validation is what they're seeking. What are INTPs seeking? They're seeking discovery, exploration to a point. And extroverted feeling inferior, what is it looking for initially? Well, it's looking for acceptance. It so desperately wants to be liked and accepted by others, right? That's ultimately what it is. But it ends up becoming a huge problem for people, uh, for ISTPs and INTPs. They both have TI Hero. Because, you know, ISTPs, they have the pride deadly sins. They can be very alien to other people. Uh, INTPs, uh, they have the gluttony deadly sins. They can be very disgusting to other people. Uh, So, which is also a form of alienation. So they can be pretty alienating to other people. So people, by default, usually don't find ISTPs or INTPs really acceptable entirely. And not only that, extroverted feeling inferior is probably one of the easiest inferior functions from which you can manipulate other people, social engineer them, extroverted feeling inferior. And you could just prey on their need to be accepted, prey on their need to be liked. Kind of like how extroverted thinking uh, inferior, you could prey upon them in terms of like, you know, telling them they're going to be more respected, they're going to be more regarded, people are going to think highly of them. That's why expert thinking inferior is the most susceptible to blackmail because anything that would harm their reputation, they'll just bend over backwards for it, which is pretty sad. And, you know, they have to learn how to cope with expert thinking inferior. 
But this is this video, this episode is not about them, so we're gonna bring it back to the extra feeling inferior types. So yeah, like like I said, it's all about they just want to be liked. They they also want, especially the people closest to them, to make them feel special by by giving them special treatment, special treatment to an ISTP because it's a concrete action. It's all concrete, you know, doing concrete actions that prove to them that they that you like them, that you're giving them special treatment above others is everything. Whereas like an INTP is a little bit different. You can kind of get away with, you know, saying nice things to them, you know, not necessarily being nice to them, but more just saying nice things to them. They often will accept words more so than actions because extroverted sensing trickster makes it difficult for them to see what other people are doing or even be aware of what other people are doing. So the concrete actions that they have are not exactly a priority for them. And that, that you know, so oftentimes INTPs end up preferring words, nice things said about them, or said to them really, actually, and saying, well, oh, I like you, or oh, I value you, you know? And they'll oftentimes, you know, bend over for that. Here's the other thing, though. The number one way to social engineer these types, which is why they really have to go out of the way to, like, cope with having extroverted feeling inferior, is that these two types can really just be guilted into doing just about anything. They're so easily guilted because they so desperately want to be liked. And all too often throughout my life, I hear about ISTP women, for example, being guilted into having sex with people, uh, INTPs uh, being guilted into doing favors that they would never do for someone, ever, in their whole life, basically. Just because guilting them works. Guilting these people is a very effective strategy in social engineering them, and they have to learn how to cope with that. And it's especially difficult for INTPs because they're triple systematic, with, combined with expert sensing trickster, they're not aware of what other people are doing, and they have no clue what people's interests are because they're triple systematic. At least the ISTP is aware of other people's interests, basically. And interest really matters. It matters to them in a big way. Because when you're an interest-based person, and we talk a lot about this in, in earlier seasons, but when you're an interest-based person, what that ultimately means, what that ultimately means is that, like, you know, they're aware of what people get out of situations compared to what they themselves are aware out of situations. So at least eventually the ISTP can kind of pick up on how other people are potentially guilting them or taking advantage of them. But the INTP is just completely oblivious, often oblivious. And it's often way too late, way too late before they even realized, uh, you know, an INTP is way too late for the INTP before they've realized that they've actually been manipulated or taken advantage of. And this leads to a lot of problems for them in their life. So oftentimes, their expert feeling inferior ends up just coming off to them like a curse. Like it's a huge burden to bear. And it can also cause themselves to be burdens to other people. Both of these people are feeling vampires. They have F.I. Demon. They really just don't care about themselves. They only care about themselves unless you, unless you are caring about them or someone in their life is caring about them. And then they will care about themselves. It's like, oh, if someone values me, that means I'm someone of value. Okay, I should value myself or I want to value myself because somebody else is valuing me, basically, right? And that's, that's how they live their life. What a, what a sad state of affairs that is, you know? You know, I feel bad for them. As much as my FI trickster can feel bad for them. I'm very sympathetic towards extroverted feeling inferiors because it's like, oh my God, they have it rough. They really have it rough. You know, and I'm an envy type where oftentimes I get upset at other people being more successful than I am when I know that I'm putting in more work and more effort than they are, right? That's my envy. But I am not envious of people with extroverted feeling inferior. Uh-uh, 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 no way. I don't want to be guilted into doing things I don't want to do. I don't want to be controlled through guilt. I, I don't want to constantly, you know, be at risk of being a doormat or a people pleaser just in hopes that someone would like me. Like, that really sucks. 
really, really sucks. Especially, like, when you consider it this way. Because people oftentimes imagine to themselves that they can earn love and they can earn respect from their fellow human beings. The reality of the situation is, is that they can't. It is impossible. It is impossible to earn someone's love. It is impossible to earn someone's respect. It is impossible to earn someone's trust. It's not earned. It is only given. And you'd think that an extrovert is feeling inferior and they're really giving, insanely giving to other people to the point where they'll go out of their way to solve other people's problems as a way of giving to other people, right? They'll do this on a consistent basis. They'll do this every single day of their life. But, you know, it's hard. Especially when that TI hero is confronted with people like me who have TI parent. And it's like, look, I don't need or want you to solve my problem. That's not how you can give to me. Maybe you could just listen. That'd be nice. I'm already misunderstood as it is. I have TI parent. I'm already, by default, pretty intimidating and alienating to other people. I mean, Railgun's that way. Railgun is one of the most alienating people I've ever met. But oftentimes, it's not her fault. I don't blame her for it. I don't blame her for being alienating to other people. I understand her. I don't judge her for that. I accept her. I accept her TI parent. And I have to learn how to be even more accepting of her, of her Effie child and her TI parent. Because it's funny, because like from an ESTP perspective, they'll do you favors that you never asked for. You, they'll do favors for you that you never wanted. They just imagine to themselves it's what you need and they'll do what you need. Or they'll assume that's what you want because they're not really aware of what you want. They don't care what you want. They only care about what they want. So they, they care about the favors they want to do you, even though it's favors you never asked for. And then they'll expect you to be grateful to them after the fact. Which is not how I prefer to live my life, but that's how they live their life. And that, you have to come to a point where you learn how to accept that part of them. We just be like, oh, thank you. Because you tried. And they, they get credit for trying. But with an extrovert feeling inferior, who doesn't have TI, apparently they have TI hero, it's completely different. So how do they cope? How do they cope with it? Well... They have to get to a point in their life where they can end up becoming their own source of self-acceptance. This is kind of the lesson of F.I. Demon. And I actually go into length about this particular phenomenon. In the, um, so in csjoseph.life forward slash members, you can become a journeyman member and you'll have access to this, this private content, uh, uh, or if you already are, you can go to csjoseph.life forward slash portal and then just go into uh, the journeyman membership section and look for the premium lectures and then look for the parenting series, the series I did on parenting. Um, you know, how, how to parent ISTPs, how to parent uh, INTPs. But even beyond that, there is episodes relating to the hypocrisy of the types. And that's why I start going into deep about the demon function and fi demon fi demon is constantly like like si demon is constantly trying to teach injs to stop taking shortcuts and actually invest more effort in their life okay that's what that's what si demon is trying to teach people my extroverted sensing demon is trying to teach me that it's nice that you're putting in all that effort chase but maybe you should be focused on practicing what you already know and becoming better and able to become a top performer at what you already know, right? Extroverted sensing demon. That's what extroverted sensing demon is trying to teach. Or what expert intuition demon is trying to teach railgun. It's constantly trying to teach railgun, hey, you need to make yourself more desirable as a person. And it's so hard for an ESTP to do that, especially with how alienating they are by default. It's so hard. Just like it's so hard for an ENTP to actually be a good performer. It's so hard. And one way or another, through the various life crises out there, especially midlife crisis and three-quarter life crisis, those life crises really causes the demon function 
to confront people so that it gets its voice heard, right? But with Introverted Feeling Demon, what the lesson that it's trying to teach INTPs and ISTPs is that, hey, by the way, you need to be your own source of self-acceptance. Literally. They need to, and it, sometimes it takes their whole life, but they need to learn how to be their own source of self-acceptance because that's how they ultimately are able, through cognitive orbit, cope with extroverted feeling inferior. Instead of always relying on other people liking them and other people accepting them, they have to get to a point in their life where they realize that they are alone. They were born in this world alone, likely if they weren't, you know, a twin. And, but one thing for sure is they're going to leave the world alone. Unless, of course, they're all dying in battle with their friends in the trenches. But, you know, that's more of an experience for men, not so much women. Women definitely die alone, especially since they usually outlive their men. And, you know, yeah, their, their children might be there, maybe. Who knows? But the reality of the situation is we die alone. We leave the world alone. You know, as, as much as we are a species that's all about establishing relationships with other people, you can't deny the fact that we're alone. We're lonely. And that's what FI Demon is trying to teach ISTPs and INTPs. You really are alone, and you just need to get to the point where you accept that you are alone. And then you accept yourself. You accept the loneliness. You accept yourself. You learn how to accept yourself. You learn how to turn that extroverted feeling inferior inward instead of outward. So that you realize that, oh, I actually can like myself. One of the best ways an ISTP can do that is through memory totems. I actually did this exercise recently with Railgun. She would go, um, she would go online, like on Facebook and whatnot, and see a bunch of people from her past. Uh, she actually had a, a family event earlier today uh, it was a it was a birthday of one of uh, the prominent uh, family members within her family, and it was basically like a family reunion. The entire family uh, on her mother's side was all in one place, and she got to see for the first time in many years how people have grown. And then people are giving her compliments constantly about how she's grown and how you know she's a mother now, and uh, wow, you've lost a lot of weight. Uh, you're really you're really performing well, uh, and you know. She's seeing that, and then she's seeing all these other family members who have not grown. A lot of people are actually worse off. They're still on the same dead-end job, or they've gained a ton of weight. I mean, shoot, I even, I even saw my sister yesterday for the first time in years, my ESFJ sister. And I love my sister. She may not agree with me, but I do love her. I, I do. I, I love every member of my family. But my sister had basically doubled in size since the last time I saw her, and I was just so sad for her, so sad for that. I, I wanted so dearly to tell her, hey, you could do one meal a day keto for a while, and then you can get into the gym and measure your food, and all that will go away. But is her TI inferior really willing to hear that? Is that TI inferior really going to listen to me in that, in that regard? Is that really what's going to happen? Probably not. TI Inferior, right? TI Inferior has the problem where they have to learn how to listen to everyone else instead of being listened to. But they so desperately want to be listened to. That's another issue. they got to learn how to cope with their, with their demon. I started thinking demon is just trying to teach them their lesson, which is you need to listen to other people. So it's hard. It's really, really hard for an expert feeling inferior. They're so at risk of being people pleasers. They so desperately want to be liked. But the truth is, that's not earned. They could work so hard their whole life to be liked. But really, it's up to the people closest to them to decide whether or not they actually like them. They could do 15 years of hard work and effort, but they could still, but those people that they want to be liked, that they want to like them, that they hope like them, can still choose to not like them anyway. What a sad state of affairs. And the FI Demon. The FI Demon is very aware of this. Very aware of this. It's aware of this risk. And that's why it often creeps its ugly head throughout their lives in multiple situations. 
trying to get them to realize, you know, hey, you know, you're going to die alone. There's people out there who may not accept you, won't like you, so you have to accept you. Here's another reason why they can accept themselves. You know, whenever I see, like, for example, an ISTP go hardcore into their vice of melancholy to the point of being suicidal, I just got to remind them, it's like, well, why? You're only suicidal because you can't accept yourself. It's not because other people don't accept you. It's not because other people don't like you. It's because you are not putting in the effort to learn how to accept yourself. You're not willing to do what Railgun did and look at all the people in your life, look at the photos, see how they've grown over time or how they've not grown and realize how much more you yourself have grown compared to them. And then boom, that really helps with accepting yourself. It's an amazing lesson. And the lesson that Railgun learned that I can help teach you ISTPs to figure out. Or INTPs. Look back into your introverted sensing. Look back into your past. Realize everything that you've been through. Realize everything that you've survived. Realize everything you've explored, everything you've discovered throughout your life. And realize that there's so much more to discover. And because you've been through so much and you're still here and you're still going, that means you have value. That means you can accept yourself. That means you can actually choose to like yourself. You don't need an external, you don't need external social proof as it were like an STP does. You can actually find that within because you have introverted sensing. So you have even less of an excuse than an ISTP does. Stop trying to take the easy route and be servile, which is what we just learned in the Deadly Sins. You guys might want to watch the Deadly Sin of Gluttony lecture that I just dropped, which explores that entire concept of being servile, where they will dedicate their purpose in life to serving others. INT, some INTPs do this, especially if they're uh, subconscious developed. They'll do this, you know, from an octogram perspective. So watch out for that. Seriously, watch out. But yeah, the answer is, how do you cope with expert feeling inferior? The answer really is, learn how to be self-accepting. Use your FI demon, turn it into an angelic ability, and learn how to accept yourself and like yourself. Because the reality of the situation is, the only person you actually have out there is you. That's it. That's the cold, hard truth of this life. You know, I might be there, I might like you, I might value you, but I'm still just a person, I'm still a man, I'm still flawed, I'm just a human being. I'm only human, after all. But you have to learn on your own to accept yourself and like yourself. That is the lesson of your demon. And I highly recommend you lean into your demon so that it becomes an angel, a guardian angel for yourself. So that because you accept yourself and can learn to like yourself and learn how to make yourself a priority, guess what? Guess what'll happen? More people in your life will stick around. More people in your life would come to you and ask you for help. More people would be willing to listen to your TI inferior, much less or much more even allow you to potentially solve their problems, which brings you a lot of joy. To ISTPs, they'd be given the opportunity to teach what they know and their skills to others. And for INTPs, INTPs would have confidence in being someone else's support structure, all because they've learned to accept themselves and to like themselves. That's literally the secret to their own happiness. So... Anyway, folks, thanks for watching and listening, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.